A little bit of snow outside, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the 844 John Deere loader and uh, go play some Tonka and push some snow and clean out the driveways and let's go have some fun. It's that time of the day. Let's clean some snow. Leg arms out there, we're doing it right now in the loader. I'm gonna grab the little guy, the skid steer. I'm gonna do a little bit, just the areas he can't really get to with the loader though. He is pretty amazing with that thing, so maybe I don't even need to. But got my old bucket here. This thing is thrash, bent, twisted. It's just, we gotta get another bucket for this skid steer. But I'm gonna use it to push some snow. It's a good thing to do, so I'll shove it over here, open the door, run the skid steer around, we'll hook on and go uh, have some fun. Let's go. Never got a chance to use the generator other than running it in here. That's good. I didn't want the power to go out. But at least now we're good to know that we got electricity on hand. Oh, it is bright out here. This is gonna melt pretty fast, I think. But let's just move it around anyways. Get it so it's piled and not on the road. In case you guys are wondering, yes, the safety locks were in so the bucket isn't gonna fall down on me when I'm climbing in. We did make sure that. So I gotta unhook that so I can uh, get this thing going. the door up and I hit one of those piles of slop and it just exploded inside the cab on me. Eh, a little dirty, not bad. I'm gonna leave the rest up to the loader. I think I got the fine tuning with this thing done so I'll just let this thing thaw in the sun and uh, let leg arms finish up his business so let's shut this down. It's gonna be a sloppy mess in about three hours. <laughs> Once that sun is right here and it gets to be about 40, 40 some degrees a day, which I think they're saying, it's just gonna melt everything. It's gonna be a mess. So that's okay, there'll be water running everywhere like it always does, but it'll dry out and then we'll be back to our normal farm work. But at least the roof, the snow on the roof is melting off because that roof line or roof load on this building is not that great. So you can't have a lot of snow on otherwise it could push it down, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get warmed up. My hands are kind of cold. <sighs> Wind picking up, it's getting cold. Maybe it won't melt as fast as I thought it would, but it is a sloppy mess. I'm still thankful for dry shot boots, nice Carhartt pants, and a nice dry duck coat that I was wearing earlier. 
Though I do live in a cold environment. I like the heat. All right, dinner time. Over the years, a number of you guys have asked me what kind of camera gear do I use? Well, the thing is, my camera gear is always changing because I'm always trying to get the latest and greatest if it's out there and if it's worth getting. But for right now, I'm using GoPro 7 Blacks for primarily 80% of all my filming. The rest would be cell phone cameras and of course drone footage, which these aren't drones obviously. But a lot of people wanna know the camera rig that I've got. And so, because on a farm it's such a dirty environment and cameras take a beating, I engineered through a trial and error finding parts that were good and parts that were bad. This setup, and I believe this setup right now is probably the best I've had so far. What it is basically is an aluminum handle, a neodymium 180 pound magnet, it's got a, I forget what you call these ball joints that can uh, rotate and twist 360 degrees, gives you the ability to flip the camera up and around wherever you need. And then as well as an aluminum housing for the GoPro Black, a protector on the end, which just saves the USB-C adapter from breaking off the end of your GoPro, the mic adapter, which is on the top of that, and then a nice little L bracket here that I built uh, to hold the microphone, the external mic up high enough so that way it's not in the camera because these things have a wide angle lens and they pick up the microphones if you have them a lot of times. So it's been a good setup. <clears throat> the thing what I'm doing right now is I'm making another one. I'm holding one in my hand. I got one here, this is leg arms. And then I'm making another one here. Reason being is my dad's been making some videos so I thought, you know what, I'll put one together for him too. So I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what I do. So let's start off with the pieces you need. Now I'm not gonna do the aluminum housing. I'm not gonna do the little L bracket that I made to hold the mic up because the thing is the new GoPro is coming out and if it's any good, I might transition to that. And if that's the case, then I won't need all that upper part. So this could be older stuff, but this is how you make the handle setup. First thing you wanna do is take your neodymium magnet. These are all in the link in the description below. Go down to my Amazon affiliate links. You'll see there and you can find all these items that I've gotten. These are just kind of the best of the best that I found over the years because when they break, I find something better. So this neodymium magnet's 170 pounds. That means, or actually 178 pounds. That means supposedly if you click it to a hard or a thick enough chunk of iron, it'll hold 178 pounds before it breaks away. Take out this little eye loop here, whatever that's called. Get rid of that. Next step is you need to find a metric threaded bolt about yay long that can thread into the same threads that's on that magnet. We had some on our shelf. I went ahead and just used them. They've been working fine, like that. So just find something like that. Take out the bottom of your aluminum handle here. The thread's out. There's a hole at the bottom. It will be threaded when you buy it. I've already drilled it out, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill this hole out at the bottom of that handle to fit the diameter of this bolt, the metric bolt. So find a bit size that matches up with that. Then take your drill bit, drill it out which I already did. Then once you've drilled that piece out, <clears throat> go back to your spot where you have everything laid out. Let's just start assembling everything. Let's put this together. So take your handle, actually first take, I like to use a lock washer, put a lock washer through the bolt, take the bolt, put it through that aluminum cap that you uh, drilled out. Take some uh, blue Loctite because if you're doing what I'm doing in a vibration environment, this camera's gonna be stuck to who knows what kind of equipment, all kinds of stuff that it shouldn't be stuck to. And I don't want it coming apart and shaking apart. And I'll tell you what, farm equipment shakes and it'll take these things and unthread everything. So take that, am I doing this right? Yes, now take your magnet here, thread it into the Loctited threads that you just put Loctite on. I like to get this nice and snug because don't want it coming apart. So tighten that up nice and tight. You may have to put this in a vise or use some kind of channel lock or something to hold it tight, uh, tight and tighter than what I did there. Take your blue Loctite again, a little more on these threads. I already had some on there. Thread this together. Again, tighten it super tight. That Loctite will just act as insurance to keep it together. But now all of this, the magnet to the handle is one solid piece and it's not gonna vibrate apart. Next step up, Loctite again. Put some Loctite on the threads at the bottom of this adapter piece here on the top of your aluminum handle. Thread that in. Tighten the snot out of that too. There we go. Take your next one, which is this joint that I've got here, this ball joint. 
lets you uh, spin, twist, all kinds of things. Really nice for camera angles if you're sticking your magnet to something that's not perfectly straight up and down or sideways or however. You'll, you'll be surprised how many times you use it. Again, more blue Loctite. Just put a little bead on there in those threads. Thread this into the bottom. And once again, tighten those two up super tight. I've been behind the scenes doing this. Okay, we're this far in now. Perfect, we're making progress. So because this camera might be the GoPro 8 when it comes out, if I do use it for this handle, I'm only gonna put on just the adapter. So this is a little piece you buy, threads onto an eighth, I think a quarter inch or eighth inch threads here. So for the time being, I'll just go ahead and uh, let's take this bottom piece off. I don't need that. Let's just uh, put a little bit of blue Loctite. Don't use red Loctite, that'll be near impossible to take apart without heat and you don't wanna do that. Blue, you can typically get apart. It just is a little added insurance. Thread the adapter in. Now, this part's kinda of tricky because this ball spins in here. So to get that tight, lock it down with your uh, tensioner right here. Tighten that up nice and solid. There we go. Okay, so there we are. There is the bottom end of this from here to here. The only difference is I did not thread into the bottom of the aluminum housing like these ones let you do because, well, I'm gonna use one of the plastic housing for the time being. But that'll work. And then if you got an angle, you can take your camera, flip it up, stick it to something, however you want. And this setup is really nice to hold on to when you're filming, got good grip, good strength. I have yet to have this thing break or come apart. So I've been really happy with it. Here's an example of that joint. Loosen your nut up here. So if you're stuck to something, you can spin the camera in any direction you want. Or if you want to stick something sideways, lift the camera up. There's a little slot there. Tighten it up. Stick it to the metal. Boom, good to go. I just used this yesterday like this, it works awesome. So for no more than probably like 40 minutes of time, plus let's just say under 50 bucks worth of parts, you can have a nice handle that is farm ready to stick to all the metal things on your farm. Hold your camera, be strong, not come apart. Really effective, really awesome. I love this thing. So yeah, check it out. Links in the description below. Go to the Amazon links there. You'll have everything I've got right here available at your fingertips to get if you want. And if the new GoPro is awesome, I would recommend build one of these for it. If you guys want to make farm videos, definitely the way to go.